Joshua Jackson. Good to see you again. Hi, buddy. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, of course. How's that? Welcome, sir. Hello, everybody. Dude, I, I'm assuming you went for this, but in this film, you totally look like Stephen Harper. <laughs> that's, that's actually what I'm modeling my, my, the middle portion of my career after. You agree with that Harper? Yeah, like, the Harper there's, a, look. there's a shot in the movie with the Prime Minister behind you, and yeah. they're like, wow. He As really, I'm striking my pose. He looks like him. <laughs> Congratulations on the film. Thank you. The idea of t telling a story that is not only, it's not set, necessarily, like it's not about today's news, right. but it is certainly very relevant. It couldn't, I mean, we got, the movie is set in Syria, yeah. and it's set just before what is now a, a civil war by any account, and it's set just before civil society starts to completely fall apart, but yeah, the, the topicality of it is intentional and accidental all at the same time. So knowing that you're a part of a movie that is at least shedding light on, this, on the mm -hmm. society, while the society is on the verge of crumbling, if not already. Already, I would say, yeah. And are there different stakes, then, for you as a, as a performer? There are different stakes that don't change the way you go about your job. The fact is, is that what's happening in Syria is much more important than anything that we could ever put on, on screen. Right. And it doesn't matter if our movie's good, or if it's bad, or if it's great, or if it's the worst thing you've ever seen, somebody's gonna die tonight in Syria. And no matter how important or valuable it might be for our film to put a light or maybe give a little bit of insight into the Syrian conflict of the Syrian people that you wouldn't have if you hadn't seen the film, what's going on there, those stakes are real. I need to talk to you about Pacey Khan. <laughs> let's, talk, let's get serious. Yeah. A lot of cats who have big characters early on try to run away from them. You sure haven't. <laughs> you don't have much now. choice. <laughs> You know, I, maybe maybe at some point in my life I'm going to regret uh, PaceyCon. I don't know. I, have we got the PaceyCon clip? Do we have that? I don't want to wait for our lives to be over. Will it be? Yes, so will it be? So people always ask me, why do I do it? I do it because Pacey Witter is the greatest character in television history. Ever. <laughs> And there's your answer, really. Yeah. Hi, hi. Is it your idea, or did someone push you to that? It, I can't even say, yeah, it was my idea. <laughs> 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 there's nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. I, you know, the, I have two enduring characters so far in my career. One's in the Mighty Ducks, and one's on Dawson's Creek. And if I'm lucky enough to have a couple more over the course of my career, I'll consider that a, a major bonus. Yeah. So, you know, maybe, I, I've, I, you know, I've met other actors who have had characters that have stuck with them and it becomes difficult for them. And I'm sympathetic to that, I get that. I mean, I don't know how charmed I'm gonna be at 45 with my, you know, you know <laughs> teaching my kid how to skate and some dude's like, yo, Pacey, what's <laughs> up? But, but, you know, it's, it's better than the alternative. Has it ever got you in trouble? All the time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's gotten me out of trouble too, which is pretty what good. You get pulled uh, over kind of trouble? Yeah, yeah. I, a couple in particular, like there was, I, he, yeah, it's, I can say this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right after the show was on, probably let's say second season, I'm driving home and this cop pulls up behind and flashes the lights and because I'm an idiot, I tried to speed off down the road and of course it takes him in about half a second to be like, come on. <laughs> so, so he pulls me over. And, in goes the lights, you know, license, registration, the whole thing, and he looks at me and he goes, you know, you got a responsibility to this town now. Don't be a jackass. <laughs> Get out of here. And he sent me home, which, A, very good life lesson, yep. and B, thank God. Stick around more Joshua Jackson. That's a good piece of advice. Also, for the come on the show, she's used to dealing with Kevin O'Leary. Wait till she meets our new panel. Ali Belshi? Oh, Ali Hassan. I'm oh. sorry. Uh, oh. I'm not. So you don't know any about the US economy or what's going to happen? Not a thing. <laughs> no, he but I, I know quite a lot about the. Wow. That went super good. She'll be back. No, she's it's cool. No, she's left the building. Three things with Amanda Lang coming up. Today's lesson, how to draw out the bluff. That much money, this early in the game, I'm saying he's holding nothing better than a pair of face cards. Bear? All right. 
Careful. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm down. game. I will see your 500, <clears throat> and I will raise you another 500 of my own. That's a very handsome bet, Josh. Back here on the show with Joshua Jackson. Um, Not a bad day's work. Dude, to be in a Brad Pitt Clooney film yeah. and everybody else that's in that, and you get the celebrity cameo. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the real cameo in that was the pants that I was wearing in that scene, but I'm at a poker table so you can't see them. Why was that the cameo? Because they had dressed us up in the schmucky actor version of ourselves, yeah. and so I had chosen these only I could do this to myself without even realizing it. These like skin tight leather pants, right? And they had red stitching in them. And I didn't really pay too much attention to the red stitching until Clooney looks over at me and goes, oh my God. <laughs> and I realized that it says sex stitched in over and over and over and over and over again on my pants. I wonder where those pants are right now. Yeah, you know, they're probably yeah. right at home. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of sex, here's this clip. The truth is you're a well put together knockout of a woman who's feeling a little insecure about hitting 40. So when a young Vero boy such as myself flirts with you, you enjoy it. You entice it, you fantasize about what it would be like to be with that young boy on the verge of manhood. Let me tell you something, you blew it, lady. Cause I'm the I'm best, the best sex, sex you'll, you'll never have. have. Wow. wow. Think basic. You're not a boy. You know, now, now that would get you on an episode of Nancy Grace's show. <laughs> I was about to say, yeah. <laughs> now that's, is, that's passe now. That's Nobody right. would even bat That's the eye. beginning though, right, yeah. in a sense? The, uh, I haven't seen that clip in a very, very long time. But you know what's crazy? So that was in the pilot of Dawson's Creek. And when that show came out, I kind of assumed that that was going to be the thing everybody mm -hmm. flipped. But what they flipped out about, we had two 15-year-old characters in Dawson and Joey who laid fully clothed above the sheets in a bed together talking about how awkward it would be if they were to ever have sex. And that's what the moral majority in America was like, no, you cannot do that. You can't talk. This is, yeah, this is awful. Only unprotected sex in the dark. That's all we'll have for teenagers. <laughs> Hey, just as an aside, last time you were here, we talked about who you kept in touch with, and Katie was in another world. Yeah. Now that she's upset, but have you got a call? Uh, yeah, actually. Really? Yeah. And like any old friend, it was like, oh, hi, how are you? What's going on? I had a kid. Yeah, that's crazy, I heard. <laughs> <laughs> that's got to be nice, though. It, it was nice. It was very nice, actually. We had, uh, Billy Connolly was on, and Connolly was saying okay, that... he was probably less easy. Yes, he was fantastic, that's <laughs> yeah, true. But he did say that, I mean, his mother had left the family when he was young. He said that he was on a show one day, and backstage a woman came and said, are you Billy Connolly? And he reached for his pen to give her an autograph, and she said, I'm your mother. Whoa. And it's like, that's heavy. I had, uh, I had kind of a similar experience. I was doing a play in London, and the stage manager came back and he said, there's a guy at the back door, he says, at the stage door, he says, is your father. I said, don't worry about it, he's a crank. I haven't seen my father in 20 years. And he comes back and he goes, he's about 6'2", he says, your mother's name's Fiona, you're born on June 11th, 1978 at a house in Topanga, or, and you lived in Topanga when you were a kid. I was like, okay, that could be him. And so there he was, after 20 years, just came to, I don't know what he, I don't know actually what it was about other than just to say, I'm here. It was a very odd experience. It was difficult for both of us, but yeah, I feel that. It's tough. Lives, <laughs> lives throw some curveballs at you, man. It's, it can be really intense, yeah. right? And it, uh, yeah, and it, it's intense. And you know that just boys to men and and sons with fathers is already is such a fraught existence. And then to throw that distance and the broken families on top of it and. You know, there's, a, there's all sorts, I mean, this is a, I mean, I'll, we can talk about this for hours, but I'll have to be laying like this instead. Um, <laughs> that would be comfortable, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, there's all sorts of loyalty issues that go into that as well, because my mother's very much the one who raised us, and... And, uh, and it's hard to, well, to even try to make that effort towards your father, yeah, right? It, it's, well, it's just like having the conversation felt a bit like I was, I was turning my back, which is not the case. That's my own weird guilt, and it's certainly not anything my mother would put on me, but it's a, I get where he's coming from. That's, it's just a strange experience. Do you have a what's next plan? Uh, I'm going to nap for the rest of December yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then start worrying about work next year. Inescapable is the film you got to see it. Josh Jackson, everybody. We'll be right back. <laughs> oh, great.